Hello, my name is Jerry Wise. I'm a relationship expert, an adult children of alcoholics expert. I'm the director of the Center for Self-Differentiation. I do individual, marital, and family coaching. And this video is entitled, Adult Children of Alcoholics and Emotional Hunger. Well, what do I mean by emotional hunger? This is my definition. Emotional hunger is the lifelong learn yearning, the lifelong yearning for intimacy, unconditional love, acceptance, and emotional connectedness with ourselves and others. Emotional hunger originates early in life when we experience a childhood living with alcoholic or addicted parents, which creates chronic anxiety, abandonment, self-rejection, and an allergy to intimacy. Again, emotional hunger originates early in life when we experience a childhood living with alcoholic or addicted parents, which creates chronic anxiety, abandonment, self-rejection, and an allergy to intimacy. As we all know, the alcoholic or addicted home is filled with a broken model of intimacy, a broken model of empathy, validation, and healthy emotional expression. The adult child of an alcoholic grows up with the three laws don't talk, don't feel, don't think. We learn, don't talk. In other words, don't speak the truth. Keep many secrets. Questions are unwelcomed. Healthy balance of power is, is not experienced. Kids are often diminished in the family and made secondary to the drama and neediness of parents. And also, this should never be discussed or expressed in families when we were growing up. Second of all, the don't feel law is the law in which we were taught to push feelings down, deny them, never express them. We believe and have come to learn growing up that feelings hurt other people Shame, guilt, anger, and fear are normal and are not considered exceptions, but are considered the norm. And then lastly, the law of don't think. Thinking things through um, is missing when we grow up. Putting two and two together is met with anger and consequences. Often our emotional hunger drives us to find someone who can meet this hunger and meet my needs with all too often failed results. We pattern our friendships, marriages, work environment, church lives, club participation, um, all based on our inner model of our family of origin. And we wonder why it always turns out the same often failed, often a struggle, often dysfunctional. We go through what I consider family of origin friends, family of origin lovers, family of origin spouses, family of origin workers, trying to find the scratch to our itch. And when I say, for example, family of origin lovers, what I mean is we find lovers that fit the broken model of our family of origin. We find co-workers and work environments which fit the broken model of our family of origin life. Asking ourselves, why do others seem fulfilled or, or have happy relationships? It seems so out of reach for the 
adult child of an alcoholic. We conclude, as we did growing up, the very important conclusion, there must be something wrong with me. Not there must be something that I need that I have never been given and that I've never learned how to achieve, such as self-love, self-acceptance, self-support, and self-care, or that I must heal before I can connect. No, we assume there's something wrong with me and that I must be bad, I must be faulty, I must be uh, uh, defective. Also, not that there's something that I must learn, such as feeling loved and lovable, before I can truly be in love and have a healthy relationship with someone else. No, we learn there's something wrong with me. We realize to feel shamed about our insecurity, learned inadequacies, we build a fortress around our hearts and emotional life, and we act mature or act normal uh, by taking cues from others as to how to act, but inside we are starving for love, acceptance, connectedness, and we experience what I call chronic emotional hunger. ACOAs often experience two things at once frozen feelings, and reactive emotional flooding. Frozen feelings and reactive emotional flooding. These two, experience, these two experiences make us feel crazy. I don't know how many times I've heard adult children of alcoholics express how they feel crazy inside and crazy in relationships to others. What is maddening about ACOA, the ACOA syndrome is the feeling of being lost and unclear or confused about what way to go or what to do, what is normal, uh, having no compass, having no map for life. The map we have is faulty, mislabeled, the dimensions are wrong. The boundaries are wrong. Some have said some have said they just feel like everyone got the memo, everyone got the manual, but the ACOA didn't get the memo. The adult child of an alcoholic believes they are to be filled up from the outside. And again, from the outside in. To satisfy this hunger, we eat relationships, we eat cars, we eat jobs, we eat careers, we eat education, we eat achievements, we eat kids, we eat sacrifices, we eat money. And again, we're trying to get all of that to get inside of us so that we can feel normal or filled up. If we eat enough of this, we will feel full, but it doesn't seem to do it. The ACOA lives a life of externals and not internals. The ACOA also believes the things that bring the most healing are the most dangerous. Those are self-differentiation and emotional self-care. Those are things that ACOA have learned to avoid. Self-differentiation will only bring about loneliness and alienation, is what is believed. If I truly am myself, that will certainly result in loneliness, certainly result in alienation. Emotional self-care will only bring up demons from my past, which I'm trying to run away from because they are so painful or so difficult and so deeply hidden. Also, I have learned that those are the secrets I should never discuss. The ACOA is also 
embarks on a life of trying anything but themselves. So what does it take to start feeling less emotional hunger? First of all, start healing the inner child. Since becoming an adult, your inner child has been waiting on you. Break the family rules. Don't talk, don't feel, and don't think. Begin to break those. Thirdly, if you're not ready to find love in the right places, at least stop looking for love in the wrong places. That's at least a beginning process. We may not know what to do, but let's stop doing what we are doing, which doesn't work. Fourthly, stop waiting for others to change or to make you feel better. Fifthly, learn to be your own therapist. And I think this is the work of self-differentiation. Self-differentiation practice, learning family systems, and understanding those two things begin to help us be our own therapist. Sixth, you're not alone, so stop acting like it, meaning it's time to start connecting with other people who are on the same journey and on the same path. You don't have to do this alone. Seven, give yourself credit for acting, uh, excuse me, give yourself self credit for getting this far, given your past, and begin to dial down the self-criticism. And again, the self-criticism is often your parents internalized or siblings internalized and living within you, but is not truly and fully you. It's what we have learned and internalized. Eight, begin by putting some patches and putting a bottom on your bucket so you can begin to fill up. This is done through self-care, self-love, self-awareness, self-insight, and self-acceptance. That begins to put the bottom on your bucket so that hunger begins to decrease and filling up emotionally begins to increase. The bucket must be repaired before we can feel the love of others. Love feels the most deepest, the most satisfying, the most intense when we don't, quote, need it anymore. That's the paradoxical truth. Once we begin to fill ourselves up, we need or demand or are addicted to the love of others far less. And then we begin to experience the miracle of how wonderful that love feels. This is when we really start to fill full of love and acceptance. Now we can really start the process of finding intimacy. Nine, emotional hunger is reduced when we see its beginnings in our family of origin and begin to be your own emotional geologist. Excuse me, genealogist. Well, geologist would work too, but genealogist. Emotional hunger is reduced when we give up, and this is number 10, when we give up our immature beliefs that as adults we believe we need our parents' love and acceptance to be whole and healthy, that without our family of origin becoming a healthy, emotional, satisfying family, we can never be happy or fulfilled, that standing on my own only creates and continues loneliness, and that being myself, being who I am, will only make my life more miserable and will cause me to be rejected. If you'd like to learn more about emotional hunger and healing as an adult child of an alcoholic, I hope what you will do is give me a call to learn more about gaining a true sense of self, contact me for online or in-office work, 
If you email me, I will send you a complete listing of all my free videos on YouTube, explain the online process, explain fees, and answer any questions you might have. There's no pressure. I'm very easy to work with. Check out Angie's list for lots of my recommendations. Join our YouTube channel. Share this video on your social media. See the screen for contact information. And I want to thank you for watching. And have a great day.